Hello students, this is Dr. Anita Raj, your chemistry mentor, welcoming you for one more session in metallurgy. In this session, we shall see how this copper is extracted from its ore by mesmerization. Okay. So, before seeing the extraction of copper, you should be aware of the different types of ores of copper. Okay. So, the first ore is copper pyrite, that is CuFeS2. The second one is copper glands, that is Cu2Es. And next one is cuprite, that is Cu2O. Okay. So, in the extraction of copper, we used to follow different steps, okay. Shall see one by one now. The first one is the concentration of ore. See, the, the ore is powdered well and it is subjected to froth flotation process. We all know there are different types of uh, con uh, uh, processes under this concentration of ore. So, in the extraction of copper, we make use of the process that is froth flotation, okay. So, the ore is powdered well and it is subjected to froth flotation process. During froth flotation process, the fine oil or eucalyptus oil is used. Okay. See, actually, this is used to form a stable froth. Okay. Why this fine oil or the eucalyptus oil is used in order to make a stable froth? Okay. Next, ethyl xanthate or potassium ethyl xanthate is used as a collector. Actually, what is the role of a collector? See, this collector will be acting as a binder. Okay, it will be acting as a binder and it binds the ore and the froth. Understood, students? So, the role of ethyl xanthate or potassium ethyl xanthate is nothing but it's a, it's used as a collector which binds the ore and the froth. Understood? So, next one is activators. See, the activators are also used to concentrate the ore. So, what are the different types of activators used actually in froth flotation process? They make use of copper sulfate, okay, copper sulfate, then sodium sulfide, okay, sodium sulfide, okay, so sodium sulfide. So, these two are the major uh, activators that are used in this froth flotation process and their use is to concentrate the ore, understood students. Next step is roasting. So, what happens in roasting? Actually, the concentrated ore is then subjected to roasting in a reverberatory furnace. So, impurities like sulfur, arsenic in the ore gets oxidized. Okay. So, what happens during roasting and where it takes place? See, this roasting is uh, uh, take, taking place in a reverberatory furnace. And what happens here? See, the impurities such as sulfur and arsenic that are present in the ore gets oxidized to sulfur dioxide and arsenic trioxide. Okay. When this is sulfur, when the sulfur is oxidized in the presence of oxygen, it, this sulfur gets converted to sulfur dioxide. Understood students, it gets converted to sulfur dioxide. Now what happens to this arsenic when it is oxidized? It gets converted to arsenic trioxide. Okay. Arsenic trioxide, AS2O3. Okay. See, if you want to balance here, here 4 AS is here. So, so here 2. So we can uh, add 2. Here. So, next what happens during roasting? Now, the ore is getting converted to cuprous sulphate and ferrous sulphate. So, what is a CuFeS2? It is nothing but it is copper iron sulphide. Okay, copper iron sulphide. When this copper sulphide, iron sulphide is oxidized, it gets converted to cuprous sulphate and ferrous sulphide. Okay, it gets converted to cuprous sulphide. What is cuprous sulphide? Cu2Es plus ferrous sulphate, FeS. Okay. Plus again, uh, we will get, we'll be getting sulfur dioxide. Understood students? So, these are the important products that we are obtained, that are obtained during roasting. Okay. And now what happens in the next step, a part of this cuprous sulfate, a part of this cuprous sulfate is converted to cuprous oxide and this ferrous sulfate gets oxidized to ferrous oxide. Understood students? So, so what happens to this uh, cuprous sulfate? It gets oxidized to, uh, to what, what is that? Cuprous oxide. Is it not? It gets oxidized to cuprous oxide. Cu2O plus sulfur dioxide. SO2. See, if you want to balance here, you want to put 2 here. Understood? Now, this ferrous sulfate will be getting oxidized. This ferrous sulfate will be getting oxidized to iron 2 oxide. Okay? It will be getting uh, iron, converted to iron 2 oxide or ferrous oxide. That is FeO. FeO plus sulfur dioxide. Plus sulfur dioxide. Okay, here also too. So, this is what happening during a roasting process. Understood students? So, the next step is a smelting. Okay, what happens during smelting? The roasted ore is melted by mixing with coke and sand in a blast furnace. 
So this ferrous oxide reacts with the silica and it forms a uh, FeSiO3, FeSiO3, which is nothing but iron 2 silicate and it is nothing but it's a slag, okay. It is a slag or a waste, okay. And what happens to this uh, cuprous oxide? What happens to this cuprous oxide? This cuprous oxide reacts with the unreacted ferrous sulfide, okay. This cuprous oxide reacts with the unreacted ferrous sulfide and it forms a Cu2S. It forms a Cu2S. Understood, students? Plus FeS or uh, FeO, okay, FeO. So this FeS gets converted to FeO and this Cu2O gets converted to Cu2S, okay. So finally, we get a molten mass called copper mate, so which that contains both Cu2S and Cu2O along with small amount of FeS and FeO. Understood? So what is copper mate? That's very important question. What is a copper mate? Copper mate is nothing but it's a mixture of Cu2S and Cu2O and small amount of FeS and FeO, okay. So, this is called as copper mate. Understood, friends? Finally, we are getting a molten mass and the molten mass contains Cu2S, Cu2O, FeS and FeO, okay. This mixture is called as a mate or copper mate. The role of silica here during extraction of copper is to remove FeO present in the mate to FeSiO3, that is a slag. That's why the silica acts as a flux okay so here the silica is acting as a flux so next we are going to see the next step that is the bismerization so for this bismerization uh, here we make use of a bismer converter so this is a bismer converter the mate obtained from the blast furnace is transferred to this bismer converter okay actually it is a pear shaped this bismer converter is a pear shaped furnace made of steel inside okay lined inside with lime or magnesium oxide so this is made up of steel and it is lined inside with lime or magnesium oxide it can this can be tilted okay this can be tilted to any position for charging or discharge so this bismuth converter can be uh, tilted to any position for charging and discharging okay now let us see what is happening during bismarization right so during bismarization the cu2 already formed reacts with the unreacted cu2s forming copper known as blister copper due to its appearance. The uh, copper which is formed during this process will be having blisters. That's why it's called as a blister copper. Understood? So Cu2O plus Cu2S reacts and it forms a blister copper. CuO plus SO2. Okay. So this is called as blister copper. Right? The molten copper is thus formed on cooling. Okay. This is uh, this uh, molten, this copper will be in the form of a molten state and it will be subjected to cooling. So, what happens? Dissolved sulfur dioxide comes out and large blisters are formed on the surface of the solidified copper. Understood, students? So, when this is cooled, when this molten copper is cooled, what happens? The sulfur dioxide present in this uh, uh, mass will be coming out. So that when this comes uh, as a gas, right, when sulfur dioxide comes out as a gas, automatically it forms holes, large blisters, okay, are formed on the surface of the, uh, surface of the solidified copper, okay, surface of the solidified copper and that copper is called as blister copper. And this copper will be having 98% of copper, okay, and this copper finally obtained during the mesmerization process is further purified by electrolytic refining. Understood, so this is how the copper is extracted, okay. This is how the copper is extracted from its ore by bismuth converter, okay. Well, fine students, you might have understood what I have taught today. Let me meet you with another important topic in my next video. Until then, it's Dr. Anitara signing off from me. Thanks for watching.